Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Random Mania 2, where we are showing week 5 of the Spring 2020 Final Fantasy Randomizer Tournament. This is Fire Week Part 2. My name is Sunny, and with me here in the broadcast booth is Jat. Jat, how you doing today? Very good, very good. This is an exciting race between two 1 and 3 competitors fighting to stay alive in the tournament. At this point, we got two weeks left, so they're fighting for that 3-3 three and three record, which will get them into the last chance qualifier. Both these guys are self-proclaimed ducklings, but they're getting their trial by fire in the spring tournament. And as we get started here, you'll see right away that we got matching parties, and that almost always means a draft. And in this case, we did indeed get one. Uh, we have Fighter, Thief, Red Mage, White Mage, which isn't too crazy, but could see potentially a restricted fast, a restricted temper, which could really throw a, a little bit of a problem at them. Right off the bat, we got Fade at level 1 and life 2. That is going to make things kind of interesting as far as I'm concerned. I never like seeing life 2 paired with Fade. Well, it's a little bit scary, but with that white mage here, I'd, I would not be complaining. Uh, there's also Cure 4, which I didn't take note of right away, so that is a very loaded white magic level 1. Yeah, so that Cure 4 there um, is going to be red wizard learnable, so they'll be able to get it after um, promotion. But nothing for right now for that red wizard. Uh, if they can find the tail in the floater early, that is a very happy knight too, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, absolutely. So, look, just going through our normal checks here, both runners... Trying to figure out what they're going to do here. We got a weapons check, wanting to get some early stuff. And very expensive steel armor, but not much else. Cinema B making the slightly, um, not, um, just a little bit of a different routing approach, going to Provoca first. Um, you'll often see this when people don't get early magic, um, because they'll check the level 2 shot. But in this case, taking some levels before going up to visit Garland, definitely not a bad choice. That certainly does seem reasonable. What doesn't necessarily seem reasonable is losing that fighter right out the gate for Cinema B. Also, the Poison Touch apparently on Imps, or was that a uh, Poison Spell, I wonder? I think it was just Poison Touch there. So, stocking up on some Pures, getting a little bit of cash, and then he'll probably be going right back up that way. Uh, the fourth white spell, I did not catch it, but we did have Cure 4, Life 2, and Fade at level I 1. I believe the fourth one was Fog 2. Yeah. So I'm not real sure where to cast my eyes at this point. We got Cinnabi in Provoca already. Grindelish is heading over to see Garland. Uh, this is already very interesting. Cinema B taking on um, the pirates here. Looks like he's going straight offense, so not deciding to set anyone down right away. Sometimes with strong early magic, and you'll see people trying to dan their thief right off, but I think both people looking, you know, pretty standard so far. Fade taking care of that nice and easily, and pretty soon we will be seeing what magic Provoca has for us. There are spiders with cremate in the Temple of Fiends. Ooh, so that's definitely making Cinema B's plan here to gain a couple levels, take an early incentive item there, pay off a little bit more. Yeah, somehow that keeps happening, just uh, spiders giving everyone arachnophobia. Spiders, Simple Sarah saying in chat, spiders are jerks. And yes, that can definitely be the case, especially if you have to make a visit to Marsh. How did we see what was on Cinema B's side in that armor shop? Max cost uh, gold bracelets. And on the left, Grendy finding the dragon armor. So of course the dragon armor, the best armor in the game for the fighter, but it's only available after promotion. It White magic. Like, it looked like Gar uh, Garland wasn't too accurate today. In white magic, speaking of accuracy, we find in Viz 2, and in black magic, we find Temper, which is learnable by the Red Mage, of course, in Provoca. So that's a big sign of relief. There was also Lit 3 in there, which can at least relieve the White Mage a little bit of their uh, AoE duties. Hmm. So we got good Sweeper magic, both level 1 and level 2. We're not looking too bad here. 
king had a tail and Sarah is playing dice today. So I'm not sure what the heck that's going to translate to right away. Getting some shopping done. Cinema B almost certainly going to go up visit Garland now. Grendy going to switch places. And um, that's going to be about that for the next little bit. So what are some critical things here in Fire Week? What are we looking at? What's, you know, the important routing decisions that are made early? Any differences you've seen so far? Uh, from past weeks, I haven't seen a whole lot of difference except for the fact that uh, you're not so excited to see Chime anymore. You're more, a lot more excited to just get that canoe and check out the volcano's incentive chest. Um, given the choice, I'd rather have Sky Week. <laughs> I like that uh, a lot more. Sunny on Team Sky Sky Sky. Yeah, I've been seeing a, a few interesting things. A lot of the time in the early game, routing and armory is a good choice. Um, but Fire Week has even more heavily incentivized going to Volcano. So Fire Week, of course, meaning that alongside our loose canal, which we find in Matoya, we have two additional loose items plus an additional incentive item in Volcano. And that's going to make people consider going there and also not only checking armory, but going a little bit deeper. I've seen some runners go into Volcano, get that early orb, get that early incentive, and do fantastic. Other ones have bounced right off, and it's cost them a ton of time as, as they've like banged their head trying to get deeper, trying to get past those two spike tiles. From where I sit, just taking a quick peek into Volcano just for that really dense uh, the uh, the treasure, the dense treasure population there is really really beneficial most of the time because a lot of times you can either find enough gold to get you where you want to be or you find something really really good like a ribbon the masa or a loose item mm -hmm. absolutely so i think one of the big decisions they make early here is do they go deeper do they hit volcano early just clear out armory do they wait a little bit try and get some levels and then go deeper or do they just avoid it entirely I don't know how much I would endorse avoiding it entirely with that one incentive chest. You never know what's down there. Yeah, definitely a risk. So we have max price gold bracelets in Provoca. Definitely not cheap. <laughs> but those are good late game um, armor, and it's always nice to find that. At least know where it is. So with the canal, our routing options open up. We have the sages accessible to us. Um, we can, of course, turn in the crown. And... We'll see what the runners do here. Uh, if I were them in this situation, my first stop would be dwarves. So yeah, there's a few free ch chests in dwarves, which are always a nice choice. Um, some people will wait to see if they can get the uh, TNT or the adamant first, but you can also check them on the way out with relatively few steps. You can even save scum if you don't want to make the walk back if you don't find anything. Now, that, that's something I haven't gotten in the habit of, is uh, the whole save scumming, resetting out of things thing. I haven't quite wrapped my head around that. Uh, would you mind explaining that just a tiny bit? Yeah, absolutely. So save scumming is a really helpful way to manipulate a few different things. The most basic usage of it is to manipulate the encounter table. So in this game, we have an encounter table. So every so many steps, you're checking against a random value. And when that, sorry, every step has a value associated with it. And when you hit a value that's higher, than the value for the area that you're in, you're going to get an encounter. So one thing that you know is every single time you do a power cycle, you're going to reset that table. And that can make it so that you can manipulate encounters so that you can dodge them. So for example, if you know after six steps on the overworld, you're going to get an encounter, you can take five, use a tent, save up, and then power cycle and get another free five steps. Now, five steps, not a big deal, but sometimes you'll find parts of this encounter table which have 20 or more steps, in which case you can make hero run after hero run and never have to hit encounters, which can really save you a lot of time throughout the course of the seed. The little bit more aggressive one that we've seen people start to use is when they're routing out entire areas, saying, you know what, I would much rather be in Onrak, for example, and save there, and then fly all the ways over, turn in the slab, and when it's nothing, they just save and quit, or sorry, they just quit without saving, and they're right back in Onrak, not having to take that long trek back. That does sound like it would be tactically advantageous, but speaking of tactics, I did notice that the level 3 black magic appeared to also be about as low as level 1 white magic. It had uh, Brack, Warp, and I can't remember what the third one was, but it was also pretty dang important. It wasn't nuke though. Uh, fast, that's it. 
Oh wow, so with fast and temper, this is definitely a great seed to be missing a black mage. The biggest risk, once again, when you're running a black when you're running a party without a black mage is that you end up with something that you just can't get that faster temper in here. We're gonna be just fine. Uh, we did while we were talking about magic though, we did see Grindy turning in his crown to Astos and getting a ruby in return. Yeah, so that ruby with the early canal as well um, is going to be nice to go turn in, get two incentive checks out of the way. Getting early incentives, especially, you know what, getting a few fetch quests is always nice. In these particular flag sets, we have 5% experience per key item. So every single key item you're getting early is just helping you level up a little bit faster. Now, does that also increase the amount of gold you get or just the experience? I believe it's just the... Um, I'm not actually sure. Um, perhaps someone in chat can help us out here. So we get another look at that level 3 black magic warp bracken fast along with slow 2. I don't think he's checked the white magic though, which seems a little bit odd considering there's more capability for white magic than black magic. So runner's just kind of retreading a common path here, checking your, your shops. We do have a shop item here, um, we don't know where it is yet, and but you are guaranteed to find an incentive item in a shop somewhere, so they'll keep checking those until they find it. Looks like we did get to see the level 3 white magic on Cinema B's side. Uh, Harm 4 was the only thing that really jumped out of me though. Yeah, Harm 4 is definitely a useful spell. In a slot that you're not competing with much else, it can be a great utility spell. If you find, you know, zombie Ds or something like that, you can use it to great advantage. Um, Harm 4 doing, I believe, about as much magic as, or as much damage as Nuke or Fade, uh, but only against Undead. Definitely a big asset though if you have to make an early Marsh dive, which we're not we're probably not going to be seeing here, unless one of them wants to take a risk. I do think anything is going to come of going into Marsh, because, well, I mean, we've already found uh, something... We've already found the canal, right? Yes, we've already found the canal, so that opens up a lot of options here, but when we're missing the canoe, there's still limited incentive locations that are available. They're not going to be able to check Waterfall, they're not going to be able to check Ordeals. Um, if they find the floater, they're still not going to be able to get the floater. So, limited options at this point. However, the Sage's item is definitely out there right now, um, and something that I'm sure we'll be seeing shortly. Probably that, and then Marsh may be on the, on the table here. Uh, MG Weirdo, our tracker. Asking was Canal in Matoya? Yes, Canal was Canal. Oh, Canal. Canal was in Matoya. Yeah, it was one of our. It was one of the loose chests, of course, because Canal always has to be loose in these flags, right? Yes, that's correct. Yes, a, a French vanilla Canal. Level five, Ice two, Quad X. So nice, but nothing essential. Life and exit for White Magic, though. That's good and bad, I think? Uh, so, exit was slot 4 there, so the white mage can learn it right away, which is super nice. Um, however, the red wizard or the red mage, neither will be able to get exit here. But having one exit caster is usually enough, especially when you have multiple casters of life, so should be okay here. Looks like Rindy gonna go ahead and turn in that ruby, make those two checks, one for the Titan's Trove and one for Sarda. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I like this play. I wouldn't be surprised to see Sinma be doing exactly the same thing. Getting incentive locations out of the way early, always a good plan. I was about to say, uh, last time I saw somebody just walk right past Titan after turning in the ruby, they totally forgot to go check the Titan's Trove. So I'm glad Grindy decided to go back in there after saving. Yeah, absolutely. We've all been there at least once. Between that and not um, talking to Bicky after you defeat the pirates, those ones, you're never remembering them, so <laughs> we don't want to see that. And looks like Grendy having no problems getting past the Titan Trove boss. Only thing scarier than that, of course, being the exit boss. Put exit in slot 2, everyone. Don't tempt fate. And we'll see what Sarda has to give us here. So Sarda giving us the chime. Chime and cube opening up all of Sky. You know, you said you were on Team Sky, Sky, Sky. 
It's got to be eating at the back of their mind now here. Is there a loose there? Do I need to check Mirage? Because right now, as we were saying before, without that canoe, routing options are limited. I think the Sages will be visited shortly, and then after that, if that gives, you know, a, a dead-end item, something like the Bottle or the Thor Hammer, um, you're going to have to make some tough decisions. Uh, I really do like the idea of visiting Mirage at the very least. The first couple floors, the item density is almost as good as the volcano, if not better. Yeah, so Mirage 1 and um, 2 having a ton of items, also having some high-level fights, and with good early sweepers, you can take them and get some really nice levels, which makes a big difference. Um, both runners right now choosing to keep up all four party members. Uh, what do you think of that so far, Sunny? Um, I personally haven't gotten in the habit of just outright danning a danning a party member because I like utility. So the idea of having the thief stay active and gain levels does appeal to me, especially since they have very limited black magic. If uh, they, if they had a black mage, I would say yeah, sure, dan the thief. But since they only have a red mage, getting that thief to a ninja could actually prove beneficial in the long run. Mm -hmm. We're also seeing some small differences between um, Cinema B keeping his fighter in slot 1 versus um, Grendelicious putting his thief in slot 1. So what are some of the advantages of putting the thief into the first slot there? Uh, as I am aware, having a thief in slot 1 makes it a heck of a lot easier to run away from fights that you really don't want to fight, as opposed to having, a having the fighter in the front who can soak up the hits a little bit better and is more likely to be targeted when he's in the front. So there's pros and cons to each strategy. Yeah, so the first slot taking up one uh, half of the swings, uh, an eighth, yeah, that's right, taking half the swings, the second slot taking a quarter, and then the third and fourth slots taking up one eighth. Finally, um, having the thief in the first slot actually has a second advantage as well, which is that you're going to be more likely to get ambushes because luck of your first party member is the only thing that impacts that. So the thief in the second slot is doing you no good, but you can get more ambushes and get ambushed less by having the thief in the first slot. And we have a hooray dwarf. Hooray! Uh, we also have an opal cheerio, so that TNT not leading them much. Yeah, so routing options are definitely getting limited here. Um, as I said, I expect to see a sage check soon. And then after that, they'll have to determine what their next steps are. So, interestingly enough, throughout the this tournament, Grendelicious has actually gotten a little bit of a reputation for running a two-person party. The reason I bring up Danning is because he has run Fighter Black Mage two-person, even to the extent of making it Fighter Black Mage none-none in his week three um, match. So he is definitely no stranger to Danning here. So I'll be curious to see if he uses that experience um, with a smaller party size to his advantage here. I'm not sure how well you could get away with that with no black mage, though, since he's only got a red mage with very, very limited uh, spell slots for nuking things down. I, I think we'd be more likely to see the fighter white mage combo since the, fi the white mage has fade. Oh, and Simple Sarah correct me in chat, it's the luck and agility of slot one. So, um, both of which the Thief does fairly well in, and you'll generally get a better shot of ambushing with a Thief or a Ninja in slot one compared to any other character there. And here we go, Grandilicious coming to check out the Sages. Will we see a Vanilla Canoe? We already got a canal from Matoya-ish, so... It wouldn't be too surprising here, especially because of how much of the world this will open up. If I'm these guys, I either want to see the canoe or I want to see the key. Because yeah. key opens up a lot of checks too. And we see the crystal for 56 grand. So that is not a cheap crystal. Finding the shop item early is always nice. However, that's going to be a tough one to get some money for. Um, we'll have to hope that we get a money sword. Although in this case, um, you, you, know, you might not want to sell the katana. I mean, if you find two katanas, that's one thing, but yeah, I probably want to keep a katana around, especially since these thieves are actually keeping up with the rest of the party. Mm -hmm. Cinema B taking, looking at Earth here. Um, so this is one of the possible locations um, to find some loose here, but without the rod, we're definitely not going to be seeing a deeper check. Um, th there's been a lot of chat in the community about 
every week being an Earth week, as it's seeming to be very common that we're finding a loose on one of these first um, Earth floor checks. It looks like the sages are sharing a big frosty mug of Oxy Ale. Okay, so we definitely have some options here, but all of them at this point are loose now. So they're definitely searching for a loose canoe at this point, I think it has to be. I mean, it could still be key, because, I mean, you could find a whole lot of things in key. Well, we have no, ins uh, we have, yeah, we have no lo um, incentive locations that are available to us at this point. So right now they're going to be opening up a lot of chests. That, that's not true, because we have the crystal available. Oh yes, right, we have the crystal available at the shop. Yes. So they'll be searching for some loose, getting some money, and then seeing what that crystal leads to as well. Deng Wu, our restreamer, pointing out we have Chime. Sky, sky, sky. And we, and we were talking about that earlier as a potential play early here in the seed. Get some levels, open up a bunch of chests. So would you rather go to uh, Mirage or would you rather go to Marsh? Oh, that's not even close. I would much, much, much rather go to Marsh. Or sorry, um, Mirage. Marsh um, being the... Having, it has a large number of different enemies, and all these different enemies can roll scripts. So scripts, in the vanilla game, each enemy, you know exactly what they're going to do. But here, we have no idea. Enemies can roll, you know, we can have spiders with blaze, as we've seen many times. And I believe we saw um, spiders with, what was it in the very, at the I very beginning? I believe that's cremate. Yeah, spiders with cremate. So you get all sorts of non-vanilla-ish things here. Um, and Marsh has lots of different enemies, so you can get lots of nasty things there. Uh, Mirage also has more chests and a great way to get levels, so. so um, it looks like Cinema B found these Zeus gauntlets, and as I'm aware, they are e equivalent to uh, the Thor hammer in what they do, but they are in a slightly worse position because they're armor, and you generally tend to keep more armor than weapons on you. Yes, that's correct. Casting Lightning 2, which is always nice. And... It looks like Grendy's giving the people what they want. We have an early... Oh. Deciding against it. We'll see where Grendy ends up going. <laughs> Grendy, go back! Go back! Where are you going? Another big benefit of the Skyplay, which I think is what would help draw me there, is those higher level enemies will drop some extra gold. And that extra gold, even if I don't find a loose in Sky, that extra gold could lead me to the crystal. And that crystal could very well send us on our way in this seed. And we can't forget the, the big thing that uh, keeps tripping me up whenever I play. Uh, I keep looking for Mass Moon, I look for Excalibur, I look for Ribbons. I look for the Aegis Shield if I'm running a fighter, which I rarely am because I'm that silly. Yes. So Deng Wu, um, even though he meant Earth, he was saying Marsh, and that's because he's just like channeling all his energy. He wants to see that Marsh play. Um, Krendy checking. Um, so he's going. So C being the third dungeon um, does have a large number of chests, especially if you end up going Mermaid side, and also another good way to get some experience, get some levels. Um, he should have exit available to him. Actually, he won't have it yet, but he can have exit available to him later um, if he gets a few more levels. So he, he does have warp out the gate, though, doesn't he? Yes, he should have warp. Um, so you can check fairly safely. Um, something that's always dangerous going into these early or these later game dungeons under leveled is that even if you find what you're looking for, you still need to get out. Get out with those levels. Get out with your loot. Um, so warp and exit making that a lot safer. I, I will be perfectly honest with you. Going into Sea Shrine scares the bejesus out of me. I have never encountered a good lobster. <laughs> oh, so Grendy checking the right chest. Are we going to see a fir right away mermaids play here? Oh, and that look, looks like what we're going here. Uh, there are no encounters in mermaid as far as I know, so that would be the safer thing to do. Yeah, you ha they're going to have to get through this floor, and this floor has a lot of, um, of chests very spread out, so a lot of steps. But once they're through that, it's nice and easy. It will take limited warp charges, get some nice levels, get some nice gold. Um, I think this is a good play. Um... While As... Grindy is dealing with these uh, Gersharks, Cinema B claimed his Opal Cheerio, so... Uh, I... What's what the benefits of the Opal Cheerio since it's apparently in our whammy loot? 
So it's a bit of a whammy prize, if only if it's not a key item. But the Opal Chariot being the best armor that a number of classes can equip, um, these, although they look like um, bracelets, they're actually taking the place of um, like chest armor. So they are comparable to chain mail and things like that. And the Opal one provides the best um, absorb out of all of them. Um, Grendelicious here checking uh, Mermaid side. Now the one problem here. Now there is a chest on this floor which has a great reputation. Um, we cannot say its name. However, there is a key lock chest on this side which, if I, if it were me, it would just be gnawing at me if I check mermaids first without the key, and then I'm struggling to find a loose later in the game. There is one chest on this floor which is key locked. So very similar to the marsh key locks in that you're always going to be worried about that. Uh, from a non-rando point of view, I wonder what the devs are thinking, because as I understand it, you get the key relatively early in vanilla, so what's the point of having key lock things late? I have no idea. I always thought that was hilarious. Same thing with the fact that you need the key to get through a door in t um, Temple of Fiends. Uh, revisited. So, mermaid so far, nothing. We're getting a lot more checks here, though. Checking the three bank on the left here. And we'll see a uh, good play here is just to do a quick warp. Um, saves you some steps. Doesn't save you encounters, of course, but can make it just a little bit faster to get back. House, silver shield, which is nice. Walking it back. I mean, aside from saving frames, there's not a lot of reason not to take a nice long walk in here since there are no enemies. Oh, every frame can count. We've seen a number of races decided by less than a minute in, in this tournament, so... And especially about as we go further and further down these Swiss rounds and we get more and more similar runners racing, um, every single second is really, really important. So far, nothing in Mermaids. We got two chests left. Oh, okay. That's not nothing. What did we find there? That would be a very large butter knife that everybody loves. That's the Mas Moon. Yeah, so we found the best sword in the game. Um... Definitely going to make this run a lot safer. Considering we have the Massa plus Temper plus Fast, we have Dragon Armor. Um, you know, we're missing a Ribbon, but already a pretty good start for gear. Uh, if we had Aegis Shield, this would be a very, very happy fighter. Yeah, so based off what Grendy's doing right now, I'm wondering if he's looking to damn that Thief now. Um, he just unequipped everything, leaving him in the first slot. Um, I would not be surprised here if... Um, that Thief takes a little bit of a dirt nap. Well, I mean, it really helps to have somebody tanking the floor for you, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so that big kind of reverse C-shape thing there, that is the uh, TFC, as they call it. Because um, if something's there, you will be not very nice to your mic. Now, I'm still learning the maps, so uh, I always have a map of these dungeons just kind of at hand to glance at. I never thought about this chest or the fact that it happens to be key locked. The, uh, it just never crossed my mind. But it does look like Grindy's going to nope on out of Sea Shrine now. Yeah, so deciding not to go... Uh, he, he may still be going left side here. Um, just wanted to save up, save those levels, save his progress, save that Massa. But no, it looks like he's just doing um, density checks right now. Um, I, I'm i not sure about, about this play. With the early magic they have available, um, yeah, Deng, Deng Wu pointing out they have Fade level 1, they have Massa, they have good armor, you have that Opal Cheerio. I think that I would definitely risk a left side C here. Um, go kill Kraken. At the end of the day, you're going to have to do these orbs, and while many runners advocate for... Um, waiting until you have, you know, a lot of your incentives out of the way. Fast orb strats are definitely legitimate as well. Yeah, uh, from, from my point of view, which I imagine may or may not be shared by other newbies, or ducklings as the terminology may be, um, getting that orb out of the way doesn't seem to be any slower. As a matter of fact, uh, it seems faster than leaving and coming back, because you're already there, you've already made it through the dungeon once, why risk all those encounters a second time? Yeah, that's definitely true. So something that's a little bit different about C is that the right side and the left side are completely split. So unlike when you're doing Volcano and you know you clear Armory, you go back up and save, and then you have to go back through Armory, um, 
in C's case, you can completely do one side, ignoring the other, and then do the entire left side. So you're going to be, if you want to check right side and left side, you're going to be doing the exact same, basically the exact same trip other than the first floor, which is limited steps. Um, but I, th I think this is a valid play as well. So we'll see um, what Cinema B does after he gets out of here. Grendy, yeah, definitely making that Mirage play. And once again, based off the fact that he didn't go uh, left side C, I'm not expecting him to climb um, up into Sky Cave, or Sky Palace as it's actually called. Um, I'm expecting a Mirage 1 and Mirage 2 check here. Uh, if it was me, I would go ahead and probably check out the first part of Sky, just because there's a pretty good amount of chests there. Of course, the chests in the first floor being very nice with that defense sword. Yeah, so the defense sword casting ruse, which is super nice for a fighter, and definitely they're continuing to find lots of things that are going to make their endgame much more secure. With Massa, Defense, Fast, Temper, Level 1 Nuke, and Biz 2 all in the early levels, you're going to be feeling pretty good about this. Um, we also saw on um, Cinema Beast's side, level 6 nuke. So a little bit high, but still still doable there. Uh, Grandy not looking like he's too keen on going into the brackets room. Less than, less than greater la than due to that, or he's just burning some encounters. Yeah, so here he's making use of that encounter manipulation. Um... Okay, yeah, so just, he, he knows the encounter table pretty well by now. Going a few deeper, knows where the bigger run is. Now, something that um, he may not be aware of is that the overworld encounters are slightly different than the dungeon encounters. Um, the encounter rate is different, so although you might know what a nice long run is on the overworld, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a nice long run inside the dungeons. Now, I did notice something about his equipment. It looked like the thief actually had the mass moon equipped, so he may not be too keen on actually killing that guy off. Oh, okay. Did you see if he had any armor equipped? Uh, I didn't see his armor, but I definitely saw that mass moon. Hmm. Yeah, so unlike in the vanilla game, um, the Thief gets some pretty substantial um, balance changes here with a double hit rate growth. So the Thief will actually swing the Massa many, many times. So the Massa is a fantastic weapon on the Thief. Though, to be fair, the Massa is a great weapon on almost anyone who can carry it. We were seeing earlier today some uh, White Mage um, Massa strats, which were paying off nicely. Uh, okay, so... I Ooh. A Aya in chat saying Grendy's Thief has a pro cape, so looks like that Thief will not be taking a dirt nap. Uh, I can't say I disagree with that, but that's just because it jives with what I would be doing at this point. Uh, I would probably be very upset seeing this encounter. Unrunnable Saber T, uh, along with the lobsters, I've never met a Saber T I liked. <laughs> so Cinema would be retracing Grendylicious steps. Interesting to see another first thing waterfall play. Now, what will be interesting to see is if Cinema B decides to go left side here, and if that left side play pays off. Now, worst case scenario, you get an Orblet, so not the end of the world. But if he does find something left side, that's going to be a huge ding for uh, Grendylicious. Because Grendy could even make like a marsh dive or something like that before he goes back to sea. Uh, we got Catman with Stinger poisoning Grendylicious' entire party. Uh, a little bit annoying, but at the, mostly it just wastes time. When you see something like that or mute, you're just like, oh god, I have to wait. Uh, I don't know, the, the poison has been the bane of my existence, right along with stone, for pretty much every seed that I've run. Mostly because I end up getting these god-awful seeds where a soft is over a thousand gold. Yeah, you'll see uh, most runners picking up a stack of... 10 or so pure pots when they have a chance, and then usually I see two or so, um, two softs um, when they can afford it. Of course, right now, money at an absolute premium because they still need to go back and afford that crystal. Uh, so, Dang Wu pointing out in chat, use your fade charges. Yes, so it's always important to go into a dungeon with a plan. Am I exiting out? Am I completing it? And in this case, in Mermaids, the answer is you're always exiting out. And you're very likely to use an inn or a house before you go back in, so you can be much more um, freewheeling with your spell charges. 
For something like, once again, Volcano, where after you finish Armory, after you finish the Agama floor, you actually have a decision. Do I go deeper? Do I exit out? Save my progress? Am I going to get more spell charges? So, I would def you definitely can spend a lot here. And with level 1 Fade, you should have more than enough to get through here safely. Uh, I just saw Gwyndulicious picking up a Mage Staff. If I'm not mistaken, that casts Fire 2, right? Yeah, so it's another caster... Um, caster weapon, which is always nice. Um, you you can use it to grind, especially if you're looking for one-man grinds. You see it a lot in black belt strats um, to let you clear larger mobs with non-casters. So it looks like you were correct. Grendy is going to go higher. Um, we'll see if he goes all the ways up to Tia, which would be a tough fight at this point, or if he's just checking the chest density that you find on Sky 1, 2, and 3. Uh, that chest density is really, really nice. It's not uh, not as nice as the first Mirage, but there's at least, what, a, a dozen, dozen and a half chests between all those floors? Yeah, um, even just on this first floor alone, uh, you're looking at, yeah, at least 10 or 11 chests on this first floor, and then even more as you go up higher. I think it'd be a very risky play, but with Warp and Exit, it's a lot safer. So that's why I think this play makes sense. Uh, we did see Cinema B picking up that Mass Moon, and looks like he uh, noped his way right on Adam Mermaids. Yep, and that's to be expected. I think we'll see here if he goes back in. Oh and my Grendy, god, there's a canoe. Grendy making the big plays, because finding that canoe there unlocks the rest of this map. That means that that crystal, it could lead to floater, it could lead to a lot, but it's not going to be that critical item, because without that canoe, Cinema B isn't going anywhere. Luckily enough for him, there isn't that much else to check. Once again, we have Sky, we have Marsh, and we have Left Side C, which it looks like is what he's going to do here. I wouldn't consider this that big of a time loss, because Grendy's going to have to do Left Side C, and Cinema V's at most opening a few more chests. So it's not really that big of a deal. He'll be getting that canoe shortly. The big question is, does he do Mar Sky before Marsh? And I would expect him to. The big difference is that when Grendy goes back for the left side of C, he's going to have a few more levels, he's going to have some more items, he's going to have a better shot at actually clearing out everything that needs to be cleared out, versus these uh, Gur Sharks that apparently use trance. Yes, so, oh, Cinema B getting a little lucky there, two of his people getting out of that trance, but that's always tough to see. These have lots of health, It's you can often not fade out of them in one turn, so you're going to be relying on that run. Definitely happy to see, uh, definitely happy to have the Thief in the party there to get that early run. So we saw Grindy fighting a Tyro. I know there's something about Tyros and steak. I'm not quite sure what the deal is with that. So the community has a great debate on whether or not Tyros are food or friends. Um, there's an option where you can transform some of these sprites into steaks. Yes, team food versus team friend. Um, so you'll see on which side these various runners fall on by which choice of sprite they have. Uh, these these runners may not have an opinion, but definitely something we can ask about in the post-game interviews here. So Grendy going to... Let's see, where are you going, Grendy? We'll see where Grendy is going shortly. Cinema B, meanwhile, healing up. Now, I'll be honest with you. The second I get Canoe, my first thought is Waterfall. That is always where I want to go first, just because it's so straightforward and then you can just leave. Yeah, Waterfall, definitely a good play. Um, it's I think one of the big deciding factors is do you have Exit, do you have Warp? Um, ordeals with Warp or Exit is a lot faster. And one reason I like the Ordeals play here is that if you end up getting Floater, it's actually faster to get here with the boat and the canoe than it is to fly here. So if you get first thing Floater here, you can always go float over to Waterfall with minimal time loss. But Ordeals, if you're flying here, you're taking a lot longer to walk. So definitely nice to check get our deals out of the way here with that early warp. Now the pillar maze here, for those of you who f are familiar with vanilla, this is not the pillar maze that you're used to. Um, each seed has the pillar maze re-randomized, so you're going forward, backwards, um, up, down, all over the place. So these runners are definitely going to have to use their memory to figure out where they're going. Uh, alternately, they can just use warp strats. Yes. Do you want to go a little bit into a little more details on that? Uh, well, as far as I'm aware, 
if you warp to the wrong pillar, you can use, well, if you touch the wrong pillar to warp somewhere that you don't want to go, you can use warp to return to the last pillar you went to, which is especially handy in the corridor with four different pillars that you can hit that can send you as far back as the entrance. Absolutely, yeah. So you're seeing that right now. And Cinema be finding a ribbon in left side C. So that's definitely a big, um, a big whoo. Because the ribbon, of course, giving resistance to all eight status types, um, which is always nice to have, and especially helpful in the early game to protect your life caster. Yeah, so we have not quite vanilla, but French vanilla um, great sharks here. Um, but once again, having trance, not making it a great tile to grind on. Great sharks and offer a ton lobster. of. Oh, yeah. So C not especially kind, but getting that ribbon is still a big advantage. Here, he's just got to get out with that white mage on intact, and there we go. Should be fine. Sorry to see some of the disadvantage, though, of Life 2 sharing a slot with Fade, is now you have to be a little bit more conservative with how often you're sending that White Mage out with that Fade charge. Yeah, it's like I said when they first saw those uh, level 1 magics, I really don't like having that much stacked on one level, especially level 1, even though you get the most level 1 charges. It's just... That choice of either offense or defense for the white mage, it's a hard one to make. Mm -hmm. So Grandy finding a pro ring so far in Ordeals, Opal Armor, but that's not going to outclass the Dragon Armor, but I would 100% be selling that for money for the Crystal. And we find a fetch quest. Apparently that fetch quest was being guarded by a pack of wolves. Yeah, so nothing too scary in Ordeals. Nice to get that out of the way, though. And I anticipate we'll be seeing a Waterfall play here. That would be my first choice. Waterfall or just a quick dip into Volcano to check out that Armory. Yeah, so... Oh, looks like Grendy's deciding to go turn in that herb first. Going the, going the short way, which is nice. Um, you can... For those of people who are newer to the game, it may not be intuitive that the map wraps around, so it's always, a, well, not always, but in this case, it's a lot faster to go up instead of going down and around. Oh, and we have nachos with Blizzard. Not nice. Gets turn order, needed that. Gets out of there safe. Uh, but I believe he only has one life two charge remaining, so definitely... Oh, no life 2 charges remaining, so he just exits out, takes his experience, which I think is a good decision at this point, and we'll see if he dives back in. So I think the uh, the Elf King, or the Elf Prince, might have been visited by a little green guy, a little guy in a green tunic, who uh, misunderstood what he needed, because he just got a fairy in a bottle. Yeah, so that's not providing any immediate progression. Um, so, Cinema B... Ah, going left side here, so definitely... Or, sorry... Grendy not finding. Grendy was with the herb turn in. Still has to make the decision. Cinema B going back into left side C. Knows a bunch of chests out of the way. This is going to go straight to um, going to go straight to the, the bottom. I can't say I really disagree with going after Kraken in Cinema's uh, Cinema B's case, as he does have that mass moon. Uh, probably not really liking these. Uh, a hag packs. Yeah, I think at this point, though, the number of chests remaining in C is quite small. You're going to be coming back for Waterfall more than likely. I think at this point you could leave and just go open some more chests, because at this point, what are you looking for? You're looking for your, your transportation. You're going to need that canoe. You have very few chests left in C, if any. So at this point, you're just going for Kraken, which is just saving you a little bit of routing. Um, this is, I think this is going to set Cinema back a little bit, because when Grendy comes back here, he's going to have a lot more key items. He's going to be taking advantage of the experience more. Um, and he could even be in go mode at that point, so it definitely will be a faster C clear for Grendy. It all boils down to that uh, argument we were talking about earlier. Uh, clear, clear the orb, or wait till you have more items. Right. And we're going to see basically a demonstration of the pros and cons of both. Yeah, so Grendy picking up that crystal, 
and also I'm um, going to check, I'm assuming the Volcano Incentive here. Definitely has the levels, has the spell slots, has the thief with who can run easily. Um, should be more than okay. Could One he also go to Ice Cave? He could also go to Ice Cave here. Um, depends on what you're looking for. There's often a big debate whether to hit Ice or Volcano first. In these seeds, um, because of the incentive in Volcano, you're getting more chests, often getting an orblet, and getting an incentive at the same time. I would probably prefer the Volcano play, but both are definitely defensible at this point. This is like the third time between our two runners where I've seen them enter that level 6 black magic shop and just kind of hover on nuke. They <laughs> really want that, I think. Uh, Frost Lobster is giving Cinema B the business right now. Yeah, C is not a safe place. You can get large packs of enemies, and if those large packs of enemies have skills, have ha have a script, it can be very dangerous. But Cinema B approaching Kraken has lots of spell charges left. Should be okay. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I've never met a lobster that I have liked. <laughs> So yeah, Grandy making the Volcano play, it looks like, here. So we'll have to see um, what this turns out. Yes, sir, we still have a loose item floating around there somewhere. So if I were hoping for a loose item in Volcano, I would probably be really hoping for that key. Yeah, the key is a nice... I think at this point... Um... If Grendy finds any loose, he's feeling fantastic. Getting both loose out of the way means that you barely need to open chests. And knowing that he has the dragon armor, he has the defense, he has the massa, you are you have almost everything you're looking for. Um, I think the only thing he's missing is a ribbon, which we know at this point is in C in Sharknado. Oh, sorry, not, not in Sharknado, Sharknado floor, which is an out-of-the-way chest. Uh, we did see Grendy... Uh, looking like he was taking some unnecessary steps, but as I know it, uh, walking on the damage tiles will prevent you from taking any encounters, is that right? Yeah, so we were talking earlier about um, the encounter table, but one of the key things is that when you're walking on fire or walking along the edge, like he was doing right there, you're actually not advancing that encounter table. So with some smart routing, you can take out a lot of steps. So Kraken... Cinema B taking on Kraken, has Stun Touch. Swing, speed and power, speed and power, Cinema B. Oh, Kraken with Blaze, that's not a good sign. Takes out the fighter, luckily still has that white mage out. It looks like Kraken ain't lacking today. That, uh, no. that hurt. So Cinema B with running out of Fade Charges. Taking out the Red Mage, Zeus Gauntlet, Invis 2, trying to do defensive strats, but right now we know that Kraken has a script, and Kraken's script is dangerous, so not all the time in the world. Speed and power, speed and power. Kraken punching, that Invis charge paying off, only two hits there. Zeus Gauntlet. Invis 2 again, I think it's the best thing you can do. Okay, getting a turn off, Ink, Invis 2. Thief continuing to use Zeus Gauntlets. These caster items really paying off, and he gets through. Cinema B, use heal pots. Yes, excellent. Because you can get an encounter immediately after a fiend between you and that orb. And after that tough fight, you hate to see it. The last thing uh, you want to see there is something with stun touch or something with a, a team wipe. So, uh, over here on uh, Grindelich's side, we've missed a couple interesting things. First off, in the Volcano Armory, we saw Excalibur and the Vorpal Sword. We also see he's got some eye encounters, and uh, yeah, it looks as I know it, those eyes are XP in a bag. Absolutely. This is probably the best single grind tile you can find in the entire game. So we'll see how long Grendy takes this, but this is in such an easy to get to location with warp and exit, your grind is safe. He's going to be taking a number of fights here. Man, this is an ex this is shaping up to be an excellent seed for endgame. You're not really gonna be lacking for much, if anything. You have levels with an easy grind, you have all the weapons you could want, you have great armor, you have great spells. Um 
The only thing I need to check is if life was learnable by the knight. Does anyone remember what slot life was in? Uh, wasn't it in slot 4? Yes, because I, I think I mentioned it was Red Wizard learnable. So life will be learnable for the knight as well. So definitely a very, very nice seed for the end game. So even if Topher is super tough, um, you'll it should be in good state. Oh, and our tracker MG pointing out that life 2 is in slot 2, so it is white locked. So not quite as free, but you'll have a knight with fade, you'll have a knight with cure 4, and those things can really pay off. Uh, probably have a knight with some other things, potentially. Uh, what, uh, what slots in level 4 are knights able to learn? So knights are able to learn nothing in level 4. Uh, unlike the ninja, the knight can only learn in the first three levels. Um, really? I could have sworn I've seen knights with uh, level 4 spell charges, but I'm probably mistaken. No, un unfortunately they don't get that. Um, but it, it will depend. At this point, we're not even looking like we're going to need... Well, they'll promote if they can, but this is definitely not a seed where they're going to necessarily need a promotion here. I guess it depends on how heavily they really want to rely on one uh, Maza Swinger, because they are going to have Excalibur pretty pretty handily, since it's right there in the Volcano Armory. Absolutely. So Grendy, just continuing to grind these um, the eye pack. Definitely a good decision. We'll see how high he goes. Um, once again, with the fact that it's these eyes are doing absolutely nothing that's threatening, and the fact that you have Warp and Exit, pretty easy to get out, not a huge risk. Currently up to level 19, so prob what I would guess is he'll go until his charges run out, and then he'll get out of here. Meanwhile, Cinema will be picking up the crystal. And we still don't know what that crystal leads to, we just know uh, Matoya is really missing her eye. So we'll see. Cinema B, not having the canoe yet, is going to definitely go turn that in. And this is just going to put him further and further away from being able to get that canoe in Sky. I think the worst case item you see here is something like Rod. Because if he sees Rod and, or something that incentivizes him to go to Earth, you might go check that, and then you're in the area, and then you're like, you know what's next? Marsh. And you're just getting further and further away. So we're hoping for a, a dead item here. I think the key would also be rough, because he key would go check some more. Yeah, so our tracker, MG Weirdo pointing out Rod Key, pointing him in the wrong direction. Definitely what he's not looking for at this point. Yeah, not the worst thing he could possibly find might be something along the lines of Floater or Power Bonk. Yeah, so Floater not doing much. Power Bonk continuing to allow for that endgame certainty. To be honest, if Cinema B finds the Floater, I think that's actually really, really that's not good either, because that would let Grendy Licious get in the sky pretty fast after this. Because once he gets out of Volcano, he's either going to check Ice, or he'll check... or he'll And if after he'll check Ice, he'll go open up that floater. So the crystal leading to anything that even speeds Grendy up more could be dangerous. Uh, we just saw Cinema B sail down, got eyes on the entrance to Marsh, and then sail right back up. You don't imagine he's going into Marsh, do you? I don't think so. I think he's just going into the inner sea to get that Matoya check. Um, there is an infamous, infamous um, North Dock for Matoya, but I, I believe it's only accessible with the canoe. So he's got to go the long way around. You can also walk, I believe, from. You may need the canoe to walk from um, Crescent Lake up to that area, which may have been faster than um, taking the boat here. Uh, based on what I know, I think you'd probably do need the canoe. But we do see Grindelish is finally breaking away from his grind and going deeper into the volcano. Kind of look forward to seeing what he ends up doing. Yeah, so you do need the canoe. And we find the floater. So, as Dengu was pointing out in chat, floater hopefully sends him to sky. At this point, he's got sea cleared out. He can't go to volcano, can't go to ice, can't go to waterfall. He either has marsh or sky. Because with the I believe... game basically handing him the keys to Sky, I hope he takes that hint. Yeah, because I believe he already... Cinema B already checked Earth, so... Meanwhile, Grandilicious doing a full clear of a uh, volcano so far. Finding the Black Shirt. Black Shirt, nice because it casts Ice 2, so another nice caster item here. And also is... 
not um, as high absorb, has 24 absorb, but excellent armor for the Black Wizard if he does find uh, that floater. Uh, well, the problem is he doesn't have a Black Mage. <laughs> oh, right, no Black Mage. <laughs> I'm too used to watching Grandy's previous matches where every single time is Black Mage, Black Mage, Black Mage. Just once, I would love to see these some runners draft uh, four white mages. Four white mages has occurred. Um, but we'll see what happens when people get into the brackets. We'll start seeing some crazy stuff. Got a Grey Worm that spews toxic. Uh, it didn't look like it did anything, though. A Grey Worm's not bad experience. Uh, oh, we have blue Ds. Wow, all the grind tiles are in Volcano. And Cinema B going to Marsh. This is a tough play. Um, this is just going to really set him behind. Now, the one benefit here is if he does find something like a loose key or a loose loot in Marsh, this could be okay, but he is just going to be banging his head against here if he doesn't find anything. This does seem like a huge gamble. Even if he doesn't find a loot or a key, if he finds like adamant or maybe the slab that could lead to that, at least he's got a slight lead on that particular chain, but it's still a huge gamble because if nothing's here, I I have no idea how far behind that would possibly put him. Yeah, he does have an orb lead. You know, finishing left side C is always nice. Um, but Grendy just getting slightly more rewarded for his routing, finding that loose item, getting the early grind. Yeah, it's it's definitely tough. Uh, MG Weirdo pointing out that it, it could be possible that, you know, last week was Sky Week, this week can't also be Sky Week. Why would I go to Sky? Or not realizing that they don't have, um, that they have the chime and the cube. Doesn't look like the upper levels of Marsh are paying off at all, getting some kindling at best. Yeah. The other risky part about this play is that there are um, chests in the bottom of Marsh that are key locked, which is going to punish him even more if the loose item is having trouble. Because just like that chest in C, knowing that there's some chest that you kind of orphan forever, always painful. And while Cinema B nopes on out of the upper levels and heads down to the lower levels, Grindelicious does pick up his rod from the volcano incentive chest and appears to be going to challenge Carry. So, and Grandy pulls carry. Fight, fight. Fade. Okay, fast. And fade. So yeah, speed and power on carry. And I like the strategy against the early fiends. Do damage to them before they do damage to you. And that is a paper carry. She's going down in two hits. And with that, at the, 50... like paper. Yeah, at the 57 minute mark, Grandy lights his first orb. Quite a bit delayed after Cinema B, but I'd say he's definitely got some routing advantages at this point. It'll certainly be stronger going into the left side of Sea Shrine. Yeah. So Grendy making the ice play. This once again makes sense. Clear up this area of the map. He's never going to have to come back. He'll be a little bit disappointed to find the floater behind the crystal, as he could have turned that in a long time ago. But... Oh! oh Sin would, would be getting rewarded for the marsh play, finding a key. Oh my goodness. So he, he needs to nope on out of there right now. So now that he has found the key in Marsh, there's a huge difference between finding a loose key and finding a loose canoe. The reason is because Cinnabi will be finding the key there. He's going to get channeled into Sky. He has nowhere left he can go other than the key locks, which will take some time. But other than the key locks, he has nowhere left to go. He knows his last loose is either in the key locks or it's in sky. The Grandy? problem being that Cinema B is currently exploring some of those other options, checking the key locked areas of Marsh, and ended up encountering a very large group of bad men. So if that didn't scare him out of there, I don't know what will. Grandy, challenging us should be okay for levels. Um... Yeah, 
Yeah, Avil's asking, is Grundy's hashtag Nevermarsh? I am also hashtag Nevermarsh, and I agree with uh, Weirdo that there is nothing in this seed that would have told me that Marsh was the play. So I would be last location Marsh for that key. Um, but on the bright side, I, you know, we'll see here that Grundy's going to be in the air earlier. Grundy's going to be clearing these dungeons. Grundy's, un Grundy's unfortunately not going to be able to go mode anything. Um, or he might if he's feeling risky. But... His routing still could pay off. I, I would say Cinema B definitely has some knowledge advantage with that key, but Grendy, don't count him out. He's still in not a bad position here. That's another edge Cinema B has is once he has that canoe, he can just go promote right away. He just goes and gets his airship, goes and turns in that tail, and then suddenly his fighter is very happy because he's also found the Aegis shield down there in Marsh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Grendy finding the slab, not... At this point, we know that um, that will be turnable. He'll be able to turn that in as soon as he gets the um, floater from Matoya. Not of course, it's going to kind of suck if that slab turns into, say, Adamant, or uh, have they found Thor? I mean, it's, that, that would be a really big whammy. So, Dangwu is saying cinema, cinema to resist Earth, but at this point, I think Cinema's already checked at least Earth 1. So, I hope at this point he knows there's far more chests without the rod in Earth to go check Sky. Doing the key lock, this is perfectly logical. You find that loose key, you gotta think, okay, you know what? That key opened up a bunch of chests. Get these free ones. And there's a katana for Cinema B for whenever he upgrades to a ninja, if, uh... If it's, uh, Thief isn't already using the Masa. Yeah, so the Katana with 33 um, attack and a nice crit rate is a, is a great weapon. It's basically a better Vorpal. Um, sorry, Falconic. But only equipable by the Thief, which makes it a little bit harder to use. But in this case, it's going to be great because he's going to be able to promote. He's going to have that Thief with some levels. So that Katana is a great weapon if while his fighter swings that Masa. So let, let's see what we know so far. We know that the canoe is in Sky. Cinema B yes. doesn't. We know the key is in the marsh. Grindy doesn't. Uh, they both have one orb each. From where I'm sitting, this is suddenly anybody's game. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely a close one. Grindy finding that early um, three eye grind tile um, is going to give him a little bit of a level edge until Cinema B finds it, but. Early levels are always worth more than late levels, because they just ensure your safety while going through some of these more dangerous dungeons. Um, so, Grendy, you know, got a level lead. Cinema B will probably be able to catch that up once he finds that, but the real question is, how many dungeons will Grendy full clear before he goes to Marsh? And I would guess that he's going to full clear all of them. I expect a waterfall play, I expect a left side C play, and then... The question is, will he do Volcano or not? Or sorry, um, Earth, all of Earth, full clear Earth before checking Marsh, and I would guess that he would do that as well. I think we just saw Simba B make a pretty worthwhile check in the Carnaria uh, vaults, or whatever you want to call them, because he found this white shirt for his white mage. Yeah, so the white shirt, a counterpart to the black shirt, and we do actually have a white mage, unlike a black mage, so that will provide some nice absorb for that white mage, as well as cast in his two, which really can save you some spell charges for the late game. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, really the, that particular spell charge matters, and Viz 2 was a was basically by itself on spell level 2, alongside a ice, a boot, and a fur. So a whole lot of anti-spells and invis 2. So Grandy finished clearing up this area, picking up some spells now that he has some money. Continues to eye that nuke and is finally able to not get it. Grendy perhaps more used to running the um, the Black Mage, so like looking at those level 6 spell slots with Envy. Yeah, that would be time number 4. I've seen them staring at those and just probably just wishing so hard they had drafted that Black Mage.
So let's see. Where is Grundy going now? I would anticipate a Matoya play here. Um, now, yeah, you, you know what the interesting thing is about this party composition and the, this draft? Uh, you said Grundy is getting to be known for his two-man fighter black mage combo, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, I've, I've actually got some information on the, what the draft was. Uh, Grindy actually drafted the White Mage and the Thief. Interesting. Um, I have heard him talk in some post-game interviews that he's been trying out some new things and he wants to expand his repertoire, so this may be him you know, saying to himself, you know what, I want to learn some different things, I want to run some different classes, and I, I applaud him for it, I think that's great. So yeah, so Grindy, using that quote-unquote, quote-unquote, North Dock for Matoya, which is nice, Gets him out of the inner sea. And he is about to get his floater, so we should be flying in about a minute. And uh, Cinnamon Bee found a ribbon in the, uh, what I like to call the Dwarf Fortress, just because it's a uh, really weird architecture and reminds me of Dwarf Fortress. Mm -hmm. So, Cinnamon Bee, two ribbons. Grendy has zero. Um, Grendy likely to be full clearing. C, so he'll probably find the, the first ribbon, but very, very unlikely to find the last ribbon, unless he goes to Marsh for some reason. Once again, both runners looking pretty good for endgame gear. Um, honestly, Grendy has pretty good endgame levels. Not quite there yet, but with what he has left to do and where he is now, he's going to be more than okay, uh, assuming Topher is not a complete and utter brick wall. Cinema B, looking healthy, should be able to get through these dungeons. He just has to make that sky play. Uh, Grindy actually has access to all four of the elemental dungeons, if I'm not super mistaken. So it could be a very, very long time before he ever ends up in Marsh. Absolutely, yeah. Grindy, I... Sorry to say it, but I fully anticipate he's going to be full clearing essentially the rest of this game. Um... At the end of this, if he has nothing left but key locked, I would not be surprised. So, looks like he's going... Where is he going? Okay, just taking the slightly longer way. Yeah, taking the, taking the little bit longer way to go to, I would believe, Waterfall. So, it's a little bit faster if you just go right and down there, but that's okay. Now, I don't know thing one about this map. I keep needing to pull one up. I've got a, I've got my laptop basically dedicated specifically to having that map open. So making some wrong turns, kind of not surprising. Yeah. So actually, yeah. So he's going to promote first. That's not a problem at all. Uh, get get that stuff set up. Get that better armor equipped. Set yourself up for the late game. There's also some free chests here in uh, the Cardia Isles, which I'm assuming he'll be checking as well, looking for that second loose. Hey, I've got nothing against uh, checking in with the Charizards. Did Grendy translate his slab? I don't believe he has yet, so he will have to go back to translate that. So the slab, um, allowing you to speak Lefanish, if you do not translate it, you will go there and you will get nothing but Lupadat, and that is always a sad moment, especially when you make that long, painful walk there. So hopefully he remembers to do that. And the good old... Um, armor switch after promotion. Cinema, meanwhile, making the sky play. He has heard our pleas, Slash has nowhere left to go, and he is going to be checking this out, and he will be finding his canoe after full clearing the first two floors. I believe the first floor of sky actually had something interesting to it, didn't it? Uh, Mirage 1 had the defense sword, I believe. Which is always a nice find. Grandy saving some time, getting those warp. So, uh, that upgrade nice for a couple of reasons. Uh, his knight will be able to learn fade and cure four. His red wizard will be able to learn cure four. So, some big upgrades there as well after promotion. So, hopefully, he remembers to go back to get those from the level one magic. I mean, how much do you really care about a knight knowing fade if they're swinging around a Masa or a Excalibur? 
Uh, I don't think Fade's a big deal, but Cure 4 is, can absolutely be a lifesaver. We've seen a number of times throughout this tournament where we have a solo knight man moding chaos, and when you see, you know, a turn 1 nuke, but your knight's surviving on 100 HP, getting those defense stacks, having Cure 4, you can really outgrind chaos, especially when you have the defense, when you have the massa, you know, you're in a good position for a long fight. So yeah, uh, Grandy not yet finding the katana, decides to go Massa on the Thief and Excal on the Knight, which definitely makes sense. I'll be interested to see if he decides to change um, to Massa on the Knight and Katana on the Thief after he gets he finds that katana. I, I just remember the first time that I ended up with the Massa, I slapped it on a red mage and suddenly it was doing more damage to my black belt and I was sad. So Grandy finding a Sun Sword. Now the Sun Sword um, a very good weapon, probably one of the... It's a lower tier endgame weapon, I would consider it. Um, you're not happy going in with the Sun Sword, but you're able to use it. Uh, but at this point, definitely outclassed by what they already have. I can't remember if there's anything interesting in these, uh, in these brackets chests. I do, I do know the the, uh, the canoe is up another floor or two, but I can't remember if there's anything super interesting between the first floor of Mirage and the first floor of Sky. Yeah, I don't think there was anything in um, Mirage 2 or Sky until you find that canoe. Um, Grendy, unfortunately, forgetting the uh, exact spell slot there. So in Crescent, um, if you are a red wizard, you can only learn the first slot. So... Melmont, level 5, you can learn everything for the black magic once you're a red wizard. However, in Crescent, only the first slot, so he was hoping he could get the nuke there. And Grendy remembering to turn in his slab. There will be no lupas today. Cinema B, meanwhile, about to find that canoe, he will be a very happy person, and I will assume... He may exit out first, but I would, based off how Cinema B's been playing so far, he's probably going to go all the way up to Tia, light his second orb, and that's really turning this into a really interesting race. Grendy making the earth check. Though logical, not going to turn out what he's looking for. So yeah, one big decision Cinema B is going to have to make here shortly is whether or not he will save his progress or if he's going to go straight back up. Now Mirage 1, I think 99% of players will exit and save because it takes almost no time. But once you're in Sky, it's uh, you know, it's some time loss to have to climb back up. Uh, the canoe obviously being critical, but at this point he's got pretty good levels, pretty good charges. Now, unfortunately for Grendy, he has the rod, and the rod is going to make this Earth play much worse for him, unfortunately. Us knowing that we know that the key is in Marsh, Grendy's most likely going to keep on going down. And there we go, at the 1 hour and 12 minute mark, Cinema B finally has his canoe, and that is a very, very, very late canoe. If he had not already found the key in Marsh, I would feel extremely behind, but at this point, I'm not sure how he's feeling. Because of the order he did things in, he might not realize that his opponent was like found that canoe and opened up the rest of the world really early before going to Marsh. But it depends on how well you know the other player. Grandis getting out of there, and looks like he is going to go deeper. Ah, so Cinema B making his intentions known. He is he knows he has both loose. He feels good about his equipment situation, having two ribbons, having everything he needs. He's gonna check a few greed chests here. And then I would I probably feel pretty good for him too. I know he's got the Aegis Shield, he's got Tomasa, he's got Excal. Uh that fighter's gotta be really happy right now. Absolutely. So he this is definitely going to let Cinema B um, jump, jump ahead here and go fast. 
because full clearing things like Earth are super, super, super slow. I would, I would say you'd think that an early dungeon like Earth might go a little faster, but then I remember, oh yeah, this is a early NES RPG. Of course it's not going to be fast. Yeah, Earth is not... Unless you find something with really bad um, skills or something here, it's not going to be so bad. Meanwhile, Cinema B, entering the Bridge of Destiny. Chat, get your bless RNGs out. Let's find ourselves a robot chicken friend. Smartly healing so, before each one. <laughs> yeah, that does seem like the thing to do. Are we hoping for an unrunnable robot chicken? Ooh. My most recent... I've had a few seeds with um, some unrunnable robot chicken friends. At this point, he's got pretty good levels, but a nuclear is definitely a big risk for him. So, for the runner's sake, I'll say no. But for the viewer's sake, give us that unrunnable. Cinnabon B not having found the grind tiles either might have taken that Warmack fight as well, because it's got some fantastic experience. It is the first example of a super boss in an RPG, to my knowledge, so it had better have some kind of good rewards. So, Cinema B taking on Tio 1. Looks like we're going. Yeah, speed and power strat. So, fade, fade, swing, and swing. But that is a high absorb um, Tia. So. Oh, Zeus, Zeus got in there. So, swing's not going to be super effective here. Um, looks like we're going into the damage strat. So against Tia, uh, with a weakness to the poison element, you can go for Bracken Bane, but it doesn't look like he's going there. And that was a paper. That was about, uh, I guess not two paper, about 800 health or so it looked like. And with that, Cinema B lights his second orb one hour and almost 16 minutes into the seed. It was a pinata Tia. It took a few whacks to finally get her down, but yeah, still made a paper. So Deng Wu saying a lot of running from cinema, but he oh, but with the way that he's going right now, he's not going to be checking. I bet hairpin in volcano, so he might not find that three eye grind spot. I was gonna say he's gonna be bailed out by the three eye grind, but he's probably not gonna find it, which will make this definitely a little bit suspicious level wise for cinema. Uh, did cinema ever check that top chest in uh, Temple of Fiends to get his dragon armor? Uh, yeah, I believe so. So, Grandy taking on the vampire. This should be over very quickly. Blink and you'll miss it. And you missed it. So, as far as I know, we're still missing one item for, uh, for anybody to have go mode. Uh, we still need to figure out what that loot is. Yeah, so the loot is in one of a few places, so it can either be behind the slab at this point, it can be behind the bottle, and I don't think we've seen a waterfall check, so it could be in waterfall as well. Uh, but other than that, we know that the loot will be in one of those three locations, so not nearly so dangerous for cinema, quite dangerous for Grendy, not knowing have where that is. Have we made a visit is. to the ice cave yet? Yes, we have. The ice cave gave check my notes quickly. The ice cave has been checked. I, I don't remember exactly what was in it, but it was... I believe it was required. Now well, something had to be interesting in there. So what we're missing right now, I think, is the power bonk, the loot, and I don't think either runner's seen the adamant yet. Uh, yeah. So the the three end items that they're missing right now are the adamant, or sorry, the Thor hammer, the power bonk, and the loot. Um, the adamant will be an in between item for one of those three, but we don't know which of those three. Uh, uh, it would and, only make um, too much sense if that adamant became a Thor, but... Yeah. And our tracker, who's been doing a great job tonight, MJ Weirdo, MG Weirdo, 
um, pointed out that ice was the slab. So we don't know yet whether ice was required. That looks like Grindylicious finding a ribbon. Uh, so uh, we, we already knew where that one was, but... Actually, that is the third ribbon, I believe. Is it? I could have sworn uh, Cinema Bee had already picked that one up. Yeah, no, that, that, is, the, that, that is the third ribbon. Uh, so Green Delicious also finds a water pack. I've never had any kind of good luck with those. They tend to hit hard and hit fast. So Grendy, um, one critical decision that's going to be coming up that really can make or break the scene for him, and I would not blame him at all if he makes the, not even what I consider the wrong choice, just the unfortunate choice for the way the seed, the seed is playing out here is, he's in the area, does he check Marsh before he goes back to sea? Because that play makes a ton of sense to go back to sea. Um, you're getting an orb out of the way, you have a bunch of chests to check. But unfortunately, it's just going to send him further and further down the wrong direction. He's just going to be keep checking every single chest until Cinema B, while Cinema B can just go mode whatever he wants. Cinema B, on the other hand, is running into a very different issue, which is Cinema B has no levels, <laughs> essentially. He has some levels, but not nearly as healthy as Grendy is. So he's going to need to find a couple levels, and he's already done what I would consider the two dungeons that are best for a walking grind, Sea and Sky, and took very minimal levels there. Um, Cinema B doing Waterfall. It does look like Cinema B is not too opposed to just fighting whatever comes its way. It seems like a slower way to do things, but it's also how I end up doing things because I'm not that uh, smart to find these grind tiles. I don't know what's good to grind. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, and that's definitely something that just comes with a little bit more experience and a lot of memorizing the experience table. <laughs> I do know I love seeing these mummy packs, though. Mummy packs, as long as they don't have anything scary or great, mummy packs occur in lots of different dungeons, so if you're seeing mummies with something like Thunder or Blizzard, you're very, very unhappy. Um, but mummies, rolling over. Always can burn them out with things like Mage Sticks too, which is nice. Also an excellent use for those Light Axes that you occasionally find. I think there's two of those that end up in chests. And Absolutely. they cast Harm too. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Sar, happy to see ninjas. Yes, we have ninjas, so we had a draft here. We had um, Red Mage, White Mage, Thief Fighter. So, and both players just going through Waterfall here. They're going to be... Um, not quite holding hands, but getting out of here at about the same time. So no I can't imagine Cinema Bee's unhappy to see the mummies as long as they don't pull something weird out of their bandages. No, definitely not. Although it's not the best experience tile you can find here, um, or encounter. You can find things like gas dragons, which <laughs> gas gas dragons, which could really help him get a few levels. Um, And so we know here we're going to find one of three things. If Cinema B finds the loot here, which he does, we are going to be going very, very fast, other than that rod. Um, the rod was located in Volcano, so just following the natural progression, Cinema B's probably going to find it. Yes, absolutely. And Cinema B not even check checking the chests. Can't blame him, he's got most of what he needs already. Yeah, I think I, equipment-wise, Cinema B is in great shape. Uh, he's not too bad level-wise either. He's uh, in the 18-19 range right now. Yeah, getting up there. It just He just needs to take a few more fights um, on the way. Uh, Grindy he... is checking the chest because he's still looking for that loose key. But uh, apparently there's not a whole lot interesting in there. Just a dragon sword, which I never see used. Yeah, so... Unfortunately for Grendy here, I think the logical play will be him to clear out the left side of C. Once again, all this routing makes perfect sense, just not what he needs, and that's going to be unfortunate for him. As Cinema B is going to turn on the afterburners and going to start going fast. Uh, I think that maybe Cinema B could probably just treat things as if he's already in go mode, because he's got to have a pretty good feeling about that volcano incentive chest. I believe, yeah, I was going to say, the only thing he hasn't checked is Ordeals here, um, which is what he's about to do. Now, 
Of course, we have galaxy brains always. Commentators always get galaxy brain. But I think in this situation, Volcano might be the safer play. You're not checking chests, so you know that you're going to have to go down Volcano anyways. You can go Volcano first, get that one item for go mode, and then... If it's not there, sure, go check ice. And if it's not there, sure, go check ordeals. Or even go check ordeals first, because it may contain less walking. I, I think I'd do ice first, but in this case, he's just going to be giving Grendy a little bit more of a chance. If he went straight Volcano, he's going to be entering Topher a lot faster. Uh, when it comes to ice, I put that in the same category as Marsh. I really don't like going in there unless it's like my only choice. Well, ice with warp in particular makes it a very fast check. Um, because he's only going to grab the incentive. If you're still hunting for a loose ice, you're walking through one the whole time. But with warp and exit, all you have to do, go down, go down the first, I guess, four floors, and then just go back, warp back up, and you can exit with the incentive right away. Cinema B making good use of that warp trick to stop going back to the beginning. So the unfortunate thing for Cinema B is that in Ordeals all you get is an herb, which is going to send you back to the Elf Prince, and then the Elf Prince is going to hand you something completely irrelevant. Yes, correct. So Shubinator asking a great ch question in chat. Why does no one ever check that chest? Well, the reason is because there are link chests, which means that an item will appear in kind of two chests simultaneously. And whatever chest gets open first will give you the item, and then the other chest will always be empty. So in this case, that chest is linked with one of the chests on the top floor. So you can skip that chest and still know that you're getting all the items you can possibly get. On the other hand, and I was corrected on this earlier, some people will still check that room, and the reason is because if you're looking for a good spike tile to grind, there is a spike tile right in front of that chest. And that can be, you know what, if you find the 3-eye grind there, good, good for you. Uh, I've also heard it said that people will check that room because it looks very, very similar to a room in Earth that doesn't have a link chest, and people can get it mixed up. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Grendy finding a second ribbon. Once again, Grendy is not looking this point. He is looking for nothing but that second loose, um, because after having checked everything, he knows that the key is loose. Oh, actually he doesn't yet, because he has not checked the bottle or the slab. But he's doing it anyways, because he knows that this these are fairly quick chests to check, compared to what he's going to be seeing soon. He knows there's a, new, a loose something, but he doesn't know what, and he can't really risk not checking for it. Unfortunately, I know you know and everyone watching knows, we know that key is loose in the marsh. Yeah. So Cinema B finishing up ordeals, now he has to hope that he's going- we have to hope that he goes to Volcano next. Um, hopefully with them being so close, he realizes, you know what, Volcano Incentive Week? Looks, Looks like, like he's going to pay the Elf Prince a visit, he's going to end up getting a bottle, and that is probably not what he's going to want to see. Yeah, and that could just send him further and further astray. Just, you know, a little bit of time, a little bit of time in a row. Grandy, meanwhile, just about to get to Sharknado. Wizard stick, that casts Confuse, I know that much, and that's partially useful against Carrie. Yeah, so Carrie has a weakness to status there, so confusing her is easier. But speed and power is still what I would recommend most of the time. So Cinema, come on Cinema, do it. Uh, he's, I think he's going to check Guy first, okay. So, I mean, that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah, go, go down the chain. This is almost like an unintended secondary consequence of doing um, ordeals before doing Volcano, because he's going to be going down this fetch chain, uh, which is just costing more time. And I'm betting anything he finds an adamant and he gets sent all over the dang world. <laughs> oh yeah, this could very well be the adamant. And once again, Sunny, the psychic, fine knowing what's coming up next i've really got to stop saying things oh 
So Grandy, on the other hand, levels looking fantastic. He's well set up for the end game here. Oh, but Cinema be making the volcano play before turning in that adamant. So this is definitely going to pay off for him. And now Cinema entering that home stretch before uh, he gets those four obs lit to go to TF T O F R Temple of Fiends revisited. Uh, now, if you're Cinema B and you do run across that uh, that three eye grind chest or spike tile, do you go for it? Absolutely, I would take probably up to 23 or so, and then just leave it from there. So take a few levels, um, but don't go much beyond that. I find that if you're you know hitting 24, um, getting getting into TF Topher around there, you're in pretty good situation. Uh, but I would take a little bit of a grind here, because grinding on that is going to be so much faster than having to take any fights in the future. And I'm not feeling comfortable at 19. There is one unfortunate thing that's going on right now for Cinema, and that's he didn't check the Volcano Armory, I don't think. Ah, uh, yeah, but that's not going to cost him anything. And Free Enterprise, raiding with a party of 190, so... For those of you who are not aware, welcome to the Final Fantasy Randomizer Spring Tournament. This is week five of six of our Swiss, and we are with two one and three runners who are fighting to stay alive. With two more wins, they'll hit three and three and get entered into a chance to run the last chance qualifier. Many will enter, one will exit, with a chance to get into the brackets in the play-in race. So, Grendy about to take on our third fiend. His third fiend, anyways. Kraken one. It looks like Cinema was almost about to walk right past that uh, volcano incentive chest. Remembered it. Good thing too, because that's got our rod. Absolutely, that would have been a critical, critical mistake, and easy to do when you're go moding. Um, so, for those of you who are just tuning in, this is Fire Week, which means that the fire dungeon, in this case the volcano, has an item right there. And with that, at one hour. 30 minutes and 50 seconds, Cinema B has officially entered go mode. Meanwhile, Grandilicious side, fade, fade, speed, and power. Once again, this Kraken, pretty high invade. Not going to be punching it very hard. But fade and some crits, doing some work. Fade. Taking a chance to do harm for getting a little scared. Ink wasting around. Does dark status, but nothing hits. One more fade, swing, 219, critical hit. Wall, giving ribbon-like defense, fade, fade. Ninja swings, 381, and terminated. And with that, we have Kraken down, and Grandy lights his third orb at the one hour and 31 minute mark. Just after Cinema B does the same thing with the fire orb. So now we're looking at Grandy probably going sky, Cinema definitely going earth if, uh, if he really doesn't care about finding power bonk. Which, oh, absolutely. At, at this point, I can't see him caring. Yeah. I hope he remembers to go get Cure 4 on his knight. But other than that, um, there's not a lot of huge things that he needs to clean up before he goes and beats the fiends. Oh, so, okay, so I like this play, actually. I was saying I, I would feel a little bit short on levels, and he's checking the Hall of Giants here. So there's two different spike tiles here, and you can check them both. And they're fast, they're great to grind on, and you can check them almost for free. Finding a pretty good one here. Um, Wiz Stamps and Zombie Ds giving quite a bit of experience. And once again, for those of you who are just tuning in, we're playing that every item along the bottom of your screen there is going to give you 5% extra experience. So at the end of this game, you are getting tons of experience from these late game enemies. It looks like Grindy's making the choice to go ahead and uh, redeem that translated slab. Uh, flew over Loopa Loopa Land. I have no idea what it's actually called, but it's Loopa Loopa Land for me. Lafane, <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, uh, flew over it. Kind of looked like he was looking for a place to land and realized, oh yeah, it's 999 miles to the north. Yeah. So this is somewhere where, that we'll see some experienced runners using that save trick. When you're not looking for anything but your go mode item, um, you can save a long way away, and that way you, can, you do not have to make the long walk back. So going to find his Thor Hammer. And there we go, using that exit tr trick right there. And I do believe that that means that the power bonk is behind the adamant. Yes, that's correct. So we'll see if Cinema B turns that in. Um, one hour and 33 minutes into the race. Um, definitely a tough one. But I don't know if you're feeling behind or ahead after finding that key in Marsh. I think at this point, I'd be feeling like it's anyone's game. 
Uh, given that nobody likes going into Marsh unless they absolutely have to, I would be feeling miles ahead. Yes, for sure. So, Grandy unfortunately making, once again, the logical, but not, in this case, correct play of going into Sky again. Gonna get his fourth orb. I mean, it's not incorrect, it's just doing things slightly out of sequence, because he has to come back here and do this anyway. Yes, that's correct. He also has limited chests left, unlike the first- if this was, you know, he hadn't made his first trip here already, he'd have all these chests, this play makes a ton of sense. But in this case, he's already checked a lot of the chests here. Marsh probably has more chests- not quite, but Marsh has close to the same number of chests that he has remaining. So, this is a, once again, logical, but not gonna pay off play here. And Cinema B, exiting out here, may take a few more levels, but once again, now that he's at 22, 23, he's gonna feel a lot more comfortable. And yeah, there we go, diving straight down. Earth being one of those dungeons where go mode makes the biggest difference. The chests are out of the way. There's a few greed chests, but for the most part, Earth sucks to full clear. So he's gonna be going pretty fast, about as fast as you can, anyways, through here, with a thief running from every fight he sees. I remember spiders being kind of unfortunate, but arachnids were just kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah. So Grandy finding that katana, always a nice pickup, but once again, not what he's looking for. He has all the weapons he needs, and he does make that play. So trading the katana to the thief, trading the massa to the fighter, maximizes your sword swinging, and you got some fantastic late game attackers there. Cinnabon B, I'd say 90% chance he's going to be, 99% chance he's going to be skipping the ribbon here, but with two ribbons already found, not a big deal. The ribbon, of course, being the best magic defense you can find for the late game, um, preventing you from getting, or mostly preventing you from getting killed through insta-death spells, halving all elemental magic. So definitely great things to have for the end game. You said, uh... You said something like nearly protecting you. Uh, there is a very tiny chance of uh, piercing through a ribbon for things like stone and things like that, right? Yeah, so it's just uh, it's just under it's under one percent. So it's three out of two hundred and fifty six chance of getting hit by one of those still, even through the ribbon. Uh, for the, of all those uh, like me who played Gen One Pokemon, you know that's still better odds than the uh, one in two fifty six mist glitch. <laughs> Absolutely. So in this case, it's something we hope doesn't happen to any of them, but if they're Bane Sword in Chaos, we hope it happens to them. And that vampire is gone. Not even going to check Count Chocula's closet. Yep. <laughs> Cinema will be about to use his rod here to lift that plate. Meanwhile, Grandy continues his full clear of sky. So yeah, Cinema B here on Earth 4, which is where the third ribbon was, but he's just going to be going straight to Lich. That, that bat just really wanted Cinema B to stop and chat. Ah oh yes, bats, the bane of Earth Cave, along with many other things. I think Earth Cave would have just as bad of a reputation as, as Marsh if it wasn't always required. Like, I really don't like Earth Cave either. The routing's hard, making sure every step counts is hard, uh, bats get in your way. I think that Marsh would still have the worst reputation because so much crap in Marsh tends to reappear later. Yeah, and all of it, almost all of it's bad news. Welcome Specty, who raced a fantastic race earlier today. Um, he's saying that's why everyone goes Earth last, and I agree. And and that's also why you see some um, people checking Earth, the early floors of Earth, checking for a loose early because they don't want to go into the, the bottom floors, but they want to make sure that there's a lower chance of a loose being there. I, I think I just saw a glitch uh, shaped thing appear for about a half a second, then it was gone. Yeah, so Cinema B took out Lich. Lich being, of course, the first major boss of the game. Um, no match for his greatly overleveled party. And I like this from Cinema B. Remembering that there's Fade and Cure 4. Oh, a little bit forgetting that Life 2 is not learnable there, but I hope he picks up Cure 4 here. Come on. There we go. 
I would even go ahead and pick up Fade because a little more AoE never killed anybody except it did. Yeah, absolutely. Also, able to pick up a few more spells for the Red Mage if he's so inclined, since I'm pretty sure the upgrade to Red Wizard unlocked a few things. Yeah, unlocked a few things, but nothing too major. Like, the big ones, Life 2 locked out, um, Nuke locked out. We'll s looks like he's going to go get a little bit more magic. I don't disagree with this in the least, especially since... Uh... It doesn't seem like anybody does this immediately after a promotion. Yeah, so the ninja, um, able to learn all the black magic, and yeah, picking up temper here makes a lot of sense. He'll also go get fast at level 3 here. Yeah, I can't say I don't like this. This is, oh, uh, distracting myself with the Bridge of Destiny on Grandulicious' side. We get a second chance at the, uh, robot chicken friend. Cinema B, meanwhile, trying to take out poor, poor Melmon more than it already is. Save Melmond. Don't hurt it more. I have not heard anything good about Melmond. So, Grendy taking on Tia, doing some defensive strats. Wall. Punches, 4 hits, 140. Not huge hits. 5 hits, 77. So yeah, Tia definitely packing some absorb at the levels they're at. Continue to fight. Fast. Another wall cast. Gets his fast off first, which is always nice. 10 hits. Wall. Thief, or fighter swinging in, 388, and Tia is terminated. So with that, Grendylicious lights his fourth orb at the hour 40 minute mark. And at with the that, same time that Cinema B enters Topher. So yeah, Cinema B definitely in good shape here. Um, we'll have to see. A little bit lacking in levels, so those non-elemental damage spells are going to be the big ones that cause him problems. Nuke, Nuclear, um, Swirl. But other than that, his party looking pretty safe. Uh, heal th I don't know if we even saw this before. Heal 3 and Cure 3 are up for sale in uh, Gaia, as we just saw from Grindelish's side. Yeah, so definitely some nice-to-haves. Um, heal 3 can actually be a great pickup before you go to Volcano to save you some heal pot, save you some time. Meanwhile, Cinema B using the loot to lift the plate, the one that you get at the very beginning of the game in Vanilla from Princess Sarah helping you get through the last door. Grendy, meanwhile, banging his head against the wall, asking, where's that key? And he's going to be doing all his turn-ins before he checks Marsh, I would guess. This is very, very unfortunate, because he's got the adamant, he's got the, the slab to turn in. It's going to be another 10 minutes or so before he finds that key, I think. So, JLo. Asking in chat, where was the key? The key was doing its best impression of a Marsh Incentive Week. And, yeah. Very unfortunate. Cinema B, looking for the canoe in a recap. Looking for the canoe, which was in Sky. Checked Marsh before going to Mirage or Sky with the chime in the cube. Dug out that key. And then was funneled into the canoe. So he had both loose. Fairly early and way earlier than Grandilicious. Cinema B, meanwhile, about to fight Lich 2. Unrunnable pack of Mud Goal and Rock Goal. I hate that encounter. Um, if I'm Cinema B, I don't hate this. I mean, it's annoying, but you're getting a levels, which is actually nice. These guys give you some good stuff. And speaking as we already things, knew, the Adamant turned into the Power Bonk. Yeah, speaking of things you hate, um, Grendy finding that power bonk, knows now for sure that... Or actually, he hasn't turned into Slab yet, I don't believe. But... Knows Enough, that he, he hasn't been to Loop Loop Land. Yeah, but pretty close to knowing that he has a loose key. Well, one of these days I'm going to slip up and call it Oompa Loompa Land. Cinema B taking on Lich. Aggressive strats, I like it. So he's using Fire 3. So Fire 3 is what Lich is weak against in his initial form, but he's not weak in his second one. Harm 4, on the other hand, still will work his charge. And Lich 2 coming out with Thunder. Okay, MG Weirdo pointing out in chat, um, Grandy do has been to Lefane, so that is why he is making this play. Oh, well, good on him, but now he's still got to figure out which chest is the right chest. Yeah, and doing topside first, a good idea, but once again, it'll take him some extra time. And Cinema B gets through Lich 2. Cinema B onto the fire floor. Some more juicy EXP there, but I respect the decision to conserve um, his charges at this point. 
Now, in regards to Marsh, I've heard it said that the four, the chests on the upper area are linked to some chests in the lower area. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So there's um, one, two chests that are linked in Marsh that you can avoid, I believe. Um, so there's a great resource on our Discord if you haven't checked it out um, and you're interested in getting started on this, especially people who are just tuning in. Come check out our Discord. There's tons of great beginner resources. You can get started playing right away. Um, if this looks crazy to you, we got great beginner flag flats and tons of support. If this looks crazy to you, don't worry, it is. Meanwhile, Cinema B about to pull carry two. <laughs> So we, saw, we saw that most of the early fiends were either made of uh, tissue paper or paper mache or glass in some cases, but uh, that usually means that the uh, fiend two fights are gonna be kind of ugly, or they're gonna have some really wicked bodyguards between them. In this case, not at all. Carry goes down first turn, and once again, I really like going fast for these early fiends. Expend your charges. Don't play too defensive. Don't give them time um, to cast anything scary. And once again, Cinema B doing a good job of saving those steps. When you walk along the bottom there, it doesn't advance your encounter table. And one encounter can save you a substantial amount of time. I think Grindy's about to find his key. Probably gonna hate every second of it. So with that, at the hour 45 minute mark, Grindy Licious enters go mode. And that is anger turning. Yep, hated every second about that. Cinema B, meanwhile, pulling Kraken 2, 900 health. Yeah, we will have to see if uh, Kraken's lacking or if he's back in a wagon. <laughs> so it looks like fast, white shirt. So doing a, a little bit of a mixture of defensive and offensive strats here. Kraken giving them a free round. Fire 2 once again with ribbons, doing half damage. Not doing much to begin with, but t taking a little bit of time to set up here. Uh, I can't blame him in the slightest. I know exactly how hard Kraken can hit if he wants to. Absolutely. Also, moving the fighter to that uh, third slot, once again, that gives him only a 1 in 8 chance of getting hit. So if that's your plan to defeat this, putting him somewhere safe, a good idea. White Shirt casting in Viz 2, making them harder to hit, and Kraken can hit like a truck. Meanwhile, he's missing a lot of his hits here. Only 3 hits, so that in Viz 2 charge paying off. Fade, I would expect here. Oh, lit three. Okay, it's trying to conserve those fade charges. Once again, not a bad idea. And a fade there from the white mage. Four hits, 348, and Kraken goes down. I don't necessarily know that he's trying to conserve fade or some of those other slots that go in slot one. Absolutely. Definitely a good point there. There's so much in that stacked level one slot that you got to be careful with what you're using. Uh, I, like, like I said way back at the beginning, I hate it when there is so much good stuff in the, in a first slot just because you are A, spoiled for choice, and they share a resource, which can absolutely kill you if you get greedy in one way or the other. So Grendy entering Topher at the 1 hour 46 minute mark, doing something, let's see, yeah, using his, using his items to try and move his heal pots into a better spot, always nice. Meanwhile, Cinema be about to take on Tia, so once again, as Denglu called earlier, this is a one toe for wipe difference right now. Cinema B goes down anywhere around here, and Grendy is going to enter the lead. And for those of you just tuning in, Tia is no joke. So, once again, similar strats, fast, white shirt, getting that invis 2 charge up, a mixture of a turn or two of setup, and then going offensive, fire 3, can be very dangerous if you don't have those ribbons, as you can see by it doing 138 to the non-ribbon person, but everyone else barely touching. Temper and swings. I almost think these uh, these second fiend fights are lulling us to a false sense of security. Uh, there's going to be some encounter right before chaos that just throws seven things that cast nuke. <laughs> Absolutely. So, and speaking of nuclear, there is the granddaddy spell itself. The white mage survives. That's critical. He's going to have a life two charge after that if he gets out of this. Go fast now. Fire three. Not doing enough. Fade. Gets through. Definitely going to continue to need some turn order here. And with that, Tia 2 is terminated. So that's one nuclear out of the pool. Um, speaking to nuclear, so there are four nuclears in the pool from Warmech, and we've only seen one of them. So this could still turn out to be a very, very dangerous chaos. So 
that is so using cure four there um not necessarily a play i would suggest because using that in fight is extremely valuable so using those leftover heal pots but he was running out so it makes sense it was the fighter's cure so if the fighter's not swinging that's just chaos having more chance to do more damage that is yep that's true Meanwhile, Cinema B doing his final party setup. Depending on that fighter swinging that Massa to do his damage, puts him in the bottom slot, and here we go, pulling Chaos at the 1 hour 49 minute mark. We have fast ninja casting it on the fighter. Temper. White shirt strats again, good defense. And the fighter using that defense, so doubling up on those um, evade stacks, and that's really nice. Now, gets the fast up. Do fast cast stack, or is it just one and done? So fast casts do not stack, it is one and done. However, a fast stack is essential if you get slowed. Essentially, the number's going from zero to two. So you start at one. If you get slowed, you go down to zero, which is bad. And then you can fast back up to one, and then fast again up to two. So having a few leftover fast charges is always a good sign in case you get slowed in chaos. Uh, chaos not doing too much so far. Ice three. Meanwhile, eight hits. I did not catch that damage number, but it looked like 500, so looking good here. Over Fate. on the other side, Grendelicious making it through Lich. So Chaos still just tickling them. Fire three, Grendelicious through Lich on the carry floor, but unfortunately this fight might be over soon. 1,064 damage. There's not much time. Max HP that Chaos can roll here is 4,600. HP, so not many rounds left. It still has four parties up. The max roll that Nuke could hit is 400, so that fighter is guaranteed safe for one more round unless he casts some type of death spell and hits that 3 and 256 chance. Lit 2 not doing much. Temper comes out. This fighter is going to hit like a truck. 8 hits, 1655 damage. And with that, Cinema B finishes the race in first place. Sunny, what is the official SRL time? Cinema B has finished the race with an official SRL time of 1 hour, 50 minutes, and 44 seconds. Congratulations, Cinema B. Moving up to 2 and 3, keeping his tournament hopes alive. Meanwhile, Grandylicious, we'll see if Cinema B joins us in the group, but while we wait for that, Grandylicious with some additional entertainment, taking on carry. Fade, 270 damage. Cure 4. Once again, you can use these Cure 4s, but if you have any heal pots at all, Definitely use those heal pots first, because those cure four charges can be invaluable in a dangerous fight against Chaos. I mean, I could pro propose a counter-argument to knowing how close that you may or may not be, depending on if you've uh, checked the SRL chat to know that your opponent is done. Uh, just casting one cure four is a lot faster than going through all that menuing. Absolutely. And same reason a heal three um, can be quite useful here. Yeah, and he's going to finish instead of forfeiting, and I like this. He's right there. These quote-unquote ducklings, as they've definitely gotten some experience through the spring tournament, trying to get as much out of it as they can. Once again, doing that nice routing, saving those steps, saving those frames. Healing up before Chaos, and let's see if he does, or sorry, before Chaos, before Kraken. Let's see if he does any adjustments here to his party order. Nice menuing there, Grendy. Takes on Kraken. Thief using his last fast charge. Fighter. Power bonk. So in the four slot, they're a little slower to menu too, but not a big deal. Fast charges on both of them and uses the wall to get the non-ribbon people that magic resistance. Ooh, Kraken hits like a truck. Once again, the difference between using Invis 2 there and not making a big difference. Now, this shouldn't be a big deal. The thief kind of there waiting to be punched, but having that fighter in the second slot, he could definitely be lacking some, um, de some safety here. And we're joined in... Oh, we were joined temporarily by Cinema B. I'm sure he'll be right back. Meanwhile, Grendy power bonking, getting ready to swing some more. Fade, 218. Red Mage went down. Fighter tanking a hit there, doing okay. Oh, Hopefully here's Cinema B. Cinema B, GG. Great job on that race. How's it feel? May still be getting some mic set up. Meanwhile, all right, can you hear me? Yep, yeah, we can hear you there. All right. Um, 
GG. So thank you. How about that key in Marsh? Oh, I was just so glad that I went in the Marsh when I did, because <laughs> I was just like, well, it's either loose in Marsh or it's loose in Sky. But if I go to if I sail to Sky from the Inner Sea, that takes forever in a day. I'm just gonna go clear out Marsh while I'm in Elfland real quick, and I found the key, and I was like, yes. <laughs> So that was definitely your defining moment. Um, that play and getting you into go mode um, just kind of gave you that ability to go fast and um, make up a ton of time on Grandy, who had to check every single chest in the game. Yeah, so... I definitely felt like if somebody had gone to Sky first, they would have picked up that canoe, and then they would have been all over the world looking yes. for the second loose item. So I was glad that I went to Marsh and was just like, okay, I'm right here, I've got exit, I've got warp, I can just dip in, see what's there real quick. And then I figured, I felt kind of behind at that point, and then when I looked at all the lock chests in the inner sea, I was feeling more behind, because <laughs> there was nothing in any of them. But I was like, at least I've got that key, probably my opponent's not going to go to Marsh at this point. So, and then yeah. as soon as I saw that canoe, I was basically in full-on go mode, where I wasn't even... Because I had so much good equipment and armor already. And so I saw that canoe, and I was like, I can class change, I've got the dragon armor, the Aegis shield, a ribbon or two, let's just... We don't need anything else, let's go! And that was absolutely the decision to make right there. Um, we were commenting that that, that was going to make the difference, um, and, and that definitely did. So, uh, just while we hold on a second here, Grendy has pulled Tia 2. Uh, oh, with, nice. a sol with a solo fighter, he got oh. wiped pretty hard by a Kraken. Um, Tia running rub, power bonk strats, I like this. Getting out, he still has those cure 4 charges, which is critical here. Mm, yeah, that level 1 cure 4. Tia, oh, Tia has swirl. swirl. But he's not using that cure 4, going, you know what, he's going to say, I'm going to swing and I'm going to swing hard. Tia, ink, waste another round. That fighter is still swinging, ice 2, not much, 22 damage, fighter, 119 health, 4 hits, 391. Fighter still swinging. Tia misses. Big miss there. Five hits, 386, and the fighter gets through. We're nice. about to see a mad mode fighter versus chaos. Enough heal pots to get back up. So yeah, so Cinnamon, we'll probably just finish um, this chaos fight with this mad mode, and then we'll get back to you. But I do have some questions about team friend versus team food when we get back to it. So you'll have to uh, let us know what side of that argument you fall on, as well as whether you are Always Marsh or never Marsh, though I think your play <laughs> speaks for itself. Um, coming back, Grendelicious, about to pull Chaos. Starts with a defense start, I like it. Chaos first turn nuclear! Oh, that's rough. We saw that on your side as well, Sinma B, but with one man, that's a lot scarier. Uh, going with the power bonk slants. Oh, and unfortunately, Grendy takes the wipe. Chaos punching for 400 plus damage after the nuclear. And that and does result in a forfeit, unfortunately. Uh, I feel the pain. And that's unfortunate for him. He had really good levels. Um, something that you didn't see Cinema B was a three-eye grind in Volcano, uh, because Grendy actually oh. took exactly the route that you thought. Um, you know, hit yeah. Sky, got that canoe, cleared out um, Volcano, kind of once again a logical play there, and found that three-eye grind. So he was in pretty good shape. But Chaos doing as Chaos does. It does. Yeah, the um, the best thing I think I saw grind-wise was those really thin zombie Ds and vampires at Earth uh, in the Hall of Giants. Yeah, and um, a number of people really liking that play, taking those last few levels you needed to get into um, Tem Temple of Fiends Revisited at a level that you were comfortable with, and it definitely paid off there, as that White Mage surviving that nuclear, huge. Yeah, and I also, um, I got up to where my ninja was at 23 to get the extra soon with the katana. And then when I went into Temple of Fiends, my fighter was only 23, but I knew that he was close enough that one of the fiend fights would get him to 24 before Kraken and Tia. A absolutely. And uh, I see Grendy in chat. Is Grendy? Yeah, and there we go. Gen D Grendy joined in with us. GG, Grendy. That's a tough one. At GG Grendy, that was that was quite the uh, the run we had there, sailing the seven seas trying to find something. Did you find your key before the very end? I did because what happened to me is I did water first because I didn't like my levels going into sky, but I felt like I could clear water, 
and then that gave me um uh then uh that got me enough money to go back to crescent lake to buy the crystal that was the vendor item and then i was back in the inner sea turning that in and i was at elflin buying magic and i was like the only two places left are marsh cave and the sky castle and mirage but if i sail over to sky it's gonna take me forever and i'm right here by marsh so i'll just clear marsh real quick get that out of the way and then if i know that i need to go to sky i'll go to sky so i got the marsh key before i even or i got the key from marsh before i even hit sky so when i got that canoe in sky i just hit go mode and was just flying yeah so not really go mode but i knew that i had both loose items so yeah, I could so just go after the incentives. A few critical route divergences. Of course, the marsh play being the big one. The other one, Cinema B, sticking around in um, C, doing both left and right side. Whereas um, Grendy, you only did mermaids. Um, that one, of course, not being the, the deal breaker there. Yeah. How did you... Uh, Grendy, how did you feel when you found that key in marsh? I mean, I was glad it was there and not back in Volcano where I orphaned a few chests. Absolutely. There, there was some chat about a uh, TFC in um, uh, in Mer in um, C. Of course, with the key yeah, being behind it, could be actually, there. I actually actually made a uh, a note that I had not checked the the TFC in C because I didn't have the key when I was there. So I had a little note being like, if you get really, <laughs> if you need to, you can go back and check that one chest. But so, yeah, absolutely. So Grendy, before the seed, were you on? side never marsh and what is your opinion now i mean i still don't like marsh if i don't have to if i don't get the canal out of dwarves or matoya i'll go there but otherwise i generally try to skip it yeah the only reason i went is because i was at elfland already like if i'd been making that decision like right after i had done c i would have gone to sky because it would have been not such a big sale but after sailing all the way to sea and then coming back down i was like marsh is right here let's just do it you know before we waste five minutes sailing around the world so i was really glad that that worked out uh but yeah definitely uh yeah it was such a coin flip whether to go to sky sky first or sea first because we got the oxy ale the cube and the chime like all before that was a real necessary decision so it was just like oh okay which of these do i want to do i ended up going c uh apparent and then i, I full cleared c and uh took out kraken on the first shot nope i did mermaids and then i went to sky and got my canoe and that opened it up for you yeah yeah grandy we were commenting all along that every play that you made made perfect sense it just unfortunately wasn't the play to make here and and just got randoed as uh, MG Weirdo mentioning in chat here. Um, Sunny, do you have any questions? Uh, uh, for yeah. These yeah, Cinema V. Uh, for a second there in Volcano, it looked like you were just going to go mode right past the rod. I know. Uh, <laughs> I was I was so upset at myself for taking those steps because <laughs> I was just like in go mode. I was like, all right, got to go feck. I was like, and the whole way down, I was like, remember, this is the incentive dungeon. Remember, this is the... <laughs> But yeah, I did. I did almost forget that when I got down to Carrie's floor. Yeah, and we, that we all held our breath there for you. But luckily, <laughs> turned around, got that incentive item. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, um, and then I was happy to see that was the rod, so I didn't have to dig anything out of Ice Cave. I never even went to Ice Cave actually. The seed, which is really weird, to never go to Ice Cave, but it's just the way that worked out. Yeah, there were some comments in. Um... You know, we, as you were going, we noticed that you went to um, Ordeals before you went to Volcano. And w what made you make that decision? Uh, that was mostly proximity because I had just, I think I had just done Waterfall at that point. And so I was just routing by proximity because hmm, uh, I knew I needed that rod. And it's like, if I, once I found the rod, like if I'd found the rod in Ordeals, I wouldn't have even, I wouldn't have even checked the incentive chest in, in Volcano. So I was just like, it's right here. I, I have warp and I'm not checking, well, not like checking chests in Ordeals. I didn't check any anyway, but it's not like it's that far out of the way, but I was like, I've got warp. I can just get through it real quick. I'm, I'm right close by in the world. Let's just do that. 
And then after that, it was basically like, okay, now I'll hit Volcano because I need to kill Carrie one way or the other, and I'll just start knocking out the rest of the incentive locations. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sunny, anything, any other questions you got? Uh, yeah, because uh, it got mentioned very briefly uh, before that uh, TMF fight. Uh, team friend or team food? What the, the, I don't know if I know this meme. Uh, the, uh, the Tyrannos. The Tyros. Oh, the Tyros. Oh, um, uh, I'm going to go food. I <laughs> I eat Tyros for breakfast. <laughs> Grandy, thoughts? I like experience. Ah, yes. Tyros are food. Yep. <laughs> I'm really not sure how high I should level with four people, though, so I think I overdid it. But, uh, what, uh, what level were you at when you went into Topher? I think somewhere like 25 26 yeah that's pretty good i usually aim for like 23 24 like as sort of like a a general minimum but um i've had i've had tofers where you had to be like level 27 28 to have a good shot and i've had some that you could run through at level 21 so i'll tend to like if if I am like a if I feel a little under leveled, a lot of times I'll just go into Topher, and if I bounce off like Kraken two just as like some gnarly gatekeeper, I'll go and like grind for you know another like three four levels to get up to where I need to be. But I've also seen plenty of Tophers because the fiends can roll down as well as roll up, and I've seen even some really nasty fiends only have like five six hundred hit points if you just speed and power just hit them really hard right from the get-go uh, yeah definitely and yeah I, I agree 23 23 with four people with with weapons and armor critically if you have if you have the gear you need um, exactly yeah that's the second consideration is like if you've got masa and a katana and the opal ring and two ribbons 23 24 is probably good to go especially if you've got multiple life casters which life Life 2 wasn't learnable, but life was learnable by the Red Mage, Red Wizard. So we had two life casters, so it was pretty solid. Let's go way back to about two hours ago at this point. So, Grendy, you mentioned that, yeah, you're a fighter Black Mage specialist. Um, I was reviewing some VODs for this race and trying to get a better idea about, you know, the types of players you guys like to be, and you've run a lot of solo fighter Black Mage, so talk me through the draft. Um, what decisions did you make, and, you know, I noticed obviously you you picked you ended up with a party that couldn't run fighter black mage. So what was going through your head there? Well, since I decided to draft and we decided it was going to be an iron gold match, I just decided I wasn't going to pick fighter or black mage because otherwise I would have just danned off my other two people and done <laughs> the same thing I always. Did. I was actually I was surprised that you didn't just use your picks to go like fighter black mage in the middle. <laughs> No, this week, actually, I've set all my practice seats to just force four random parties and run with whatever I get. Gotcha. It hasn't gone well, but... Yeah, yeah, no, random parties can be, well, you know, all over the place. I This is pretty close to... I have been running um, Fighter Rainbow a lot, obviously, is kind of a standard go-to. I've also been running a lot of a very similar comp to what we played, but with a black mage instead of a white mage. Uh, with the Fighter Thief red mage... Uh, black mage. Yeah, and um, that's de that's been a a common um, comp throughout this tournament. I saw an interesting stat on that that I can't remember exactly what two runners it was, but in non mirror matchups, two of the top runners were four and zero with that exact comp, and mm -hmm. then the other runners were zero and four. So it's definitely a comp that can do well in the right hands, but I think it requires a lot of um, careful knowledge about when to down a member, when to bring them back up. <laughs> And all it's that. also much more of a, a nice edge run than the fighter rainbow uh, to substitute the thief for the white mage because you're getting a bunch of ability to get into places low level and run and get what you need but you're losing that guaranteed access to life spells and some of the utility that the white mage brings and healing and just like things like invis 2 so it, it's definitely i've noticed in my own games it's like it's real knife's edge running the fighter thief uh red mage black mage because you if things go sideways they go wrong real quick yeah <clears throat> absolutely so um yeah let's go on 
to our final thoughts here. So why don't we start off with our winner here, Cinema B, moving up to two and three. What? Yeah, Do you have any that... final thoughts for us here? I'm really stoked because because uh, two wins was actually like my goal for the tournament. So personal goal achieved, and this gives me um, a shot to get into the last chance qualifier. So be practicing up for the last week, but mostly I've just been having a lot of fun uh, playing Final Fantasy randomizer so this this tournament's been a blast like all the way throughout uh run into a lot of like cool people uh i was uh i was playing more actively last year in the fall um and now i'm kind of back into it playing on the regular again it's just been really great to like catch up with everybody and uh i just want to say gg to uh grandy i know you were right behind me uh you as soon as I got on the interview, you were already at Tia 2, and had the RNG just gone a little differently, uh, you would have uh, been finishing about like two, three minutes behind me. So uh, thanks for the game, man. And with that, Grendy, final thoughts? This has been fun. I look forward to next week when I take a black mage so I can have nuke for sure. And... <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, it, it was fun. I was glad I was actually close in this race i really felt far behind kind of the whole time yeah no it was definitely a close one and and other than that key grandy you were making a lot of really good decisions and you were honestly i would say you were in the lead until um cinema b pulled that key and then i kind of groaned and was like oh no grandy is 100 percent last locationing that and unfortunately that is pretty much what ended up happening sunny my fantastic co-commentator any last thoughts here this seed was amazing to watch and it was incredible to see these two running it especially since it's a seed I rolled <laughs> <laughs> I hope this isn't indicative of what I'm going to roll for in the future because that key just trolled the crap out of both of you yeah <laughs> no it was definitely a good seed you gotta you know things can be anywhere <clears throat> yeah definitely a fantastic rate and with that, we're pretty much going to wrap things up here. Thank you very much for everyone who tuned in, everyone who rated, and everyone who stuck around to the end. Thanks again to our, to my co-commentator, Sunny, the two runners, our restreamer, Deng Wu, our fantastic tracker, MG Weirdo. Stay tuned tomorrow for some more great Final Fantasy randomizer. Favorite the channel, check out our Discord, check out these runners, and we'll see you all again soon. Good night, everyone. <laughs>